on it's epic underworlds and in today's video i'll be showing you 18 new cards for my trading card game perpetual cosmos tcg in the last uh, few videos i've been slowly showing you all the cards and i made 18 new ones so i thought i'd make a video because i've been doing a lot of unboxings and other uh kind of card game related videos so i really need to do more perpetual cosmos stuff to keep up but um we've been playing it a lot on online if you want to join you can join the discord and start playing too it's been quite a bit of fun but yeah, let's get right into the cards. First one is the prize one. It is kind of a desert-themed card, and its ability is pretty good. Then we have the Balin Butcher. This one is kind of a play on the Bay Harbor Butcher, which is a, a TV show. Um, with a, It's called Dexter, I think, and it's uh, pretty cool. So I made that card as kind of like a funny poke onto that. Then we have Northern Single Signal. Sorry. I tried a really unique effect to, dry, to draw a mountain, and I think it turned out really good. So a lot of people don't use this card for some reason, so I'm hoping uh, people will use it. I mean, it's not that bad. It says search your deck for a 1-2 to two cost creature and place it at the top of your deck. I mean, yeah, it's not that powerful, but I still think it's a decent card. Then we have Enigmatic Arrow. This is kind of a must in every deck. Discard target spell that is in play or played. So pretty powerful. Then we have Old Ways. Just gain an extra soul, which is the currency of the game. Then, if you guys did not know, I actually redid all of the trader cards. So if we look at my little kind of binder of all the cards that did not make it, you can see that that is the first soul trader. That template I did not like. There's also a few others that you might recognize, but these are all the cards that did not make it. And again, that old soul trader template was not looking good at all. So I basically redesigned the whole template. And this is what it looks like now. It's got some little soul coins around it, some wood planks and uh this one is the first one it's arcs of arcs this is the most classic trader so when you play perpetual cosmos you get to choose a trader's ability um at the start of your turn so this guy has quite a few options you can either gain four souls or you can exile a card in your hand to gain five souls or you can draw one card and gain one soul which i think is a really powerful ability then we have Beto, which is probably the most used one gain four souls or you can um deal two damage to one of your landscapes and gain six souls which is crazy or of course you can gain three souls and dual, deal one damage to target creature so that's probably the best trader so far no one's really used this except for gadolinium he actually built a deck around stealing your opponent's souls so this one says gain plus three souls and subtract one from your opponent or gain souls equal to the number of creatures your opponent has in play um this this card will definitely be a lot better as more strategies come out then we have tongue gun which is a very popular card in the meta right now because it's got a fun little gamble ability which all the gamble abilities are pretty good like there's no downside so it's gain two two souls if you roll a one to two three to five you can deal three damage to target which also means you could do it to your opponent's landscape or if you roll a six you can deal six damage to target creature or uh or landscape of course so that's a pretty good ability even though it's a one one then um, people said this card's really good because it can one-shot a landscape because it's got 10 attack and landscapes have 10 health. So if you can manage to play this, it's a really good play. Stare of Size. So I've been making some insect-themed cards, as you guys can see. So that's the little ant. He's looking at a giant bee hovering over him. And it says, when a creature uses an ability, cancel the ability. So I don't know. I, this probably should have been a two-cost, but... I guess we shall see if it gets any play. Shock Staff, I'm going to be putting this card to the side because it does it has a really good combo, but it was in my card game, Epic Underworlds, drawn by Unleashed, so I thought I would redraw it and add it to my uh, new game. Then we have Zongbat, which is a really good card. It's a 6 cost, but it's a 10 attack, so it can also one-shot a landscape, but it does have one less life, and it's one less cost. Then Distant Corruption is a temporary spell. Destroy all creatures currently on play on both players' side of the field. It's a really good card. It is an 8 cost, though. So I, I was having some discussion on the server if people would actually want to play this card. And people are kind of mixed feelings, so I guess we'll have to test it out a little bit more. Then we have Grip of Dark of the Dark Side. Rearrange your discard pile in any way you want. So this is the card that combos with Shock Staff, because Shock Staff says, Return the bottom card of your discard pile to your hand. Well, what if the bottom card of your discard pile is not the card you want to return? That's where Grip of the Dark Side, you can rearrange your discard pile in any way you want so and it's a zero cost so that's a pretty good combo so that was gripped with the dark side then today in art class uh, we had a substitute teacher so instead of doing my project like i was supposed to do i made trading cards i got plant nursery which is a permanent spell at the end of your turn if this card is still in play add plus one life to target landscape and but it can't go above 10. then we have nurtured lilies which i feel like will be a really good card both players draw two cards yeah, it's giving your opponent a buff, but it also gives you a buff. So I think a lot of people run that card. And then we have one new landscape. It is a Lost Pond. So if you like kind of a pond, 
uh, art, and now you can add that. And it's only the second landscape in the game, really. So I'm really glad we finally have a new one. So yeah, those were 18 new cards. Uh, actually, comment down below what is your favorite card. Um, a little update. I will be updating Gallows. I have to redraw its whole artwork because uh, I have to fix this. It should say permanent, and I also have to fix the cost because it's too good. And its ability. <laughs> it's basically just a broken card. So yeah, that was this video. We're now up to 60 cards in Perpetual Cosmos. So it's really exciting. And I can't wait to show you new cards. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.